Hi, Andrew here, your average jeweler, and I'm excited today to be talking to you about a common question, although not one I feel is asked enough, because there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misunderstandings, and that is what type of jewelry metal do I use? So let's get into it. So in talking about jewelry metals, uh, the first one that comes to mind that we should at least cover is going to be what you would commonly associate with costume jewelry. And you're going to mostly see plated materials in this category. You're going to see a lot of gold plated. You're also going to see silver plated. It's just the idea. It's not a solid metal all the way through. You have some kind of essentially what would be a coating on the outside. Sometimes it's heavier than others. But generally speaking, you're going to see this in what would be more of a fashion jewelry or a costume jewelry category. So I wanted to cover this not because you'll see it a lot or not because most people don't understand the difference in this particular category, but you will see it in jewelry and it's important to understand the pros and the cons. The main upside to this is probably more obvious and that is the price you're almost always going to see plated jewelry cost much less than jewelry made out of what we consider to be more precious metals. And that's a great reason to consider it. Um, it means you can buy these things just based off of maybe you fall in love with the design and it gives you an opportunity to get a piece of jewelry at a low cost. The cons are, are worth considering. Um, you know, one of the biggest things is that people fall in love with their jewelry, they love wearing it, and plated things can almost always not be repaired. Um, repairs are very difficult, especially when something actually breaks. Usually they cannot be soldered together. You have difficulty just reassembling them in the same fashion that they were made because they weren't made to be repairable. They were just made to be inexpensive and fun and they serve their purpose and that's great but you need to understand that that is a component of plated materials. So without spending too much time on it, the big thing with this is it's an inexpensive piece of jewelry and it's going to help you out if you just want to get something that you can buy quickly without having to think about a lot. You know, it's a budget piece. So let's move right along into the more precious metal category, which is going to be more common. And we're going to start with silver and more commonly sterling silver. Sterling silver is the most common alloy for silver because it makes a substance like silver that's very soft, much more usable in various purposes. So you're going to see things like 925. Sometimes it's actually marked sterling. The 925 is because it's 92 and a half percent pure silver and then a composition of other metals to make up an alloy. Now silver again is going to be more of a price point piece that doesn't mean it's going to be nearly as inexpensive as your costume jewelry and it doesn't mean it's always inexpensive. Sometimes the person's labor to go into it is very much going to be reflected. When you're dealing with a less expensive material you're dealing much more with the labor costs associated with it. So a designer piece, you would anticipate paying more for that. When you buy a piece of plastic and you pay for whatever it is, whether it's a phone case or anything of that nature, you're not thinking that you're paying for the material value of that rubber or plastic or silicone or whatever it is. You're paying for the process of someone to make it and distribute it and silver falls much more into that category, although it does have value. Now with that said, what are the backdraws to something like silver versus the positives? Uh, the positives, you're going to again find a lower price point. You're going to find most of them are repairable. You're also going to see that you're going to find a lot of different styles. You're, you're, you're seeing more designs, more people are working with it. So you have that. Uh, with that said, you do have some downsides to working with silver. One of the first ones that comes to mind with the repairability is that repairs can cost more than the piece does itself. Because now you're having to backtrack, you're taking the order out of how it was made, and if you paid $30, $40 for 
a piece of sterling silver jewelry, you might find that a jeweler has to charge $50, $60 just to justify his repair costs and being open and the fact that it's going to take him a lot longer to repair than it probably took to initially make and he doesn't have that process. He doesn't have things laid out for making that piece of jewelry. So keep that in mind. It's also a, a very obvious thing that sterling silver jewelry will tarnish. It's going to turn uh, black, sometimes brown, and it can be more obvious in some cases than others. They do put rhodium, which is a platinum family metal, over a lot of sterling silver, and that can mitigate it for a time, but the, plat the rhodium will eventually wear off, and that rhodium plating is not meant to be a permanent fixture on your piece. So when it comes to the long-term look of your piece, you want to consider it's not going to look like it did new in the case, when you're wearing it in a few years. And sometimes if they need constant cleaning or more cleaning, it will wear that finish down. And so you're actually going to be dealing with a metal that's going to look more dull. It's gonna require more polishing and some of them can be very difficult to clean and polish. I'll actually talk about that in another video, um, some different techniques and common things that we go about when we start cleaning and polishing jewelry. With that said, it's a consideration, and maybe the final and biggest consideration when it comes to sterling silver is the overall durability. Now, people often talk about gold, which we are gonna talk about in a little bit, as being soft. Silver is that much softer. Gold is soft in a relative sense to that of steel and iron, where it's very malleable, but it's also very tough, and it's still a lot harder than silver. So when people work with silver, if you're hammering out silver versus gold, that silver is going to hammer out much more quickly. Most people also don't take the time to harden their silver, which is a thing. You can actually harden the metal from a more soft state to a hardened state based on the techniques you're using. If they're drawing it out, they're hammering it, they're in some way compressing the metal, it is going to make it more durable. Most people don't go through that process we see hundreds of earring wires, this is a big one, where we can just take it and just bend the wire right up without even having to try. It doesn't take any effort at all, it's incredibly easy to do, and again, it's a consideration. When you translate that to prongs, we hardly ever work with sterling prongs because they can be so problematic. And I'm not talking about you walking out the door and it falling apart. I know lots of people out there wear sterling silver jewelry, they wear sterling silver rings even, but usually if you have a sterling silver ring that you wear all the time, chances are it's pretty heavy, or maybe you're just really careful with it. Because all day long, we see people coming in with their sterling jewelry, rings in particular, they're falling apart, prongs can almost always never be repaired, and they've become attached to this piece of jewelry that now they can't enjoy anymore. So it's, it's at least a consideration, especially when you consider the long term, which is what we're usually thinking about. A nice piece of jewelry can last a long time, and sterling won't always give you that, especially in rings. Rings would be a big one. So let's move on into gold. Gold is your biggest category when we talk about jewelry metals, and that's for a lot of reasons. Uh, this is going to be the tipping point when I start talking about much more positives and fewer negatives, but in this, in this case, the negatives or the con category can be a little bit daunting, and that is the price. The price of gold, regardless of what specific alloy it is, is going to be more expensive than silver and plated jewelry almost all the time. There are exceptions, but generally speaking, gold jewelry is going to cost more. And that, that's enough to just stop the conversation there for a lot of people. But let's at least talk about what you're getting when you spend that extra money for gold. First of all, gold has material value that will always be there. I don't tell people to buy this for investment purposes because I don't think that that's a smart idea. You're not buying a gold coin, you're buying a piece of gold artwork essentially. So you're not going to get your money right back immediately, but there always are going to be some 
material values associated with gold. Another thing about gold is, as I previously hinted at with silver, gold is going to be much, much, much more durable. And people don't think about it a lot because it all looks the same in the case. And they hear marketing all the time, they see ads about how great sterling silver is. And sterling silver can be fantastic, but in comparison to gold, you're talking about rings that might get a few years versus that exact same design in gold going decades. And it is something that we see. We see a lot of repairs. I, I see hundreds of repairs every month dealing with rings, and I see a lot of rings that are decades old, 20, 30 years, even more after they've probably had to go through some kind of repair, but I see rings that are 50, 60, 70 years old that have been worn and are made out of gold. I never see that in sterling silver, ever. Um, usually sterling silver rings that are worn on a consistent basis Unless they're really heavy, they only last a few years. So if you're talking about an important piece of jewelry that's supposed to be a keepsake, particularly your engagement rings, any kind of anniversary jewelry that means something to you, you're gonna wanna consider spending that gold price because the long-term benefits certainly outweigh the cost in that category. You also have a lot of different colors. That's something that throws many people off. They'll talk about they like silver because they like the color. Well, there's white gold. There's also rose gold and of course yellow gold. They come in different alloys. You have your 10 karat, which is less pure gold in there, 14 karat, which is in the middle, your 18 karat, which is about 75% pure gold, and onwards um, up to 22, 23, 24 karat being your pure gold. So there are a lot of different options. Don't feel like you're locked into one type of thing when someone says gold because you have many different things going on when someone says the word gold. It's a consideration and if you're wanting to invest in a piece of jewelry, not, not money-wise, but sentiment-wise, then gold is an excellent choice. 14 karat gold would be my top pick because it's a good balance of that malleability and also price point, whereas 10 karat can be a little more brittle, 18 karat's going to cost you more. 14 karat is a great alloy if you're looking for my practical recommendation. Moving on to platinum, because I, I do want to spend some, some time on platinum. Platinum, again, the, the biggest con is going to be the price. The biggest negative to platinum is the price. There are some instances, though, where I actually feel, and other jewelers would agree with this, that gold is more practical in some instances. Platinum will bend a little bit more easily, and therefore tall prongs might be a little more practical in, in gold. But platinum wears very differently, making it a practical type of metal. Platinum doesn't actually separate from itself. Gold, if you look at an old gold ring, it's going to have worn down over time. Usually we're talking decades, but I look at a 50-year-old gold ring, and it's very much thinner than when it began. When I look at a platinum ring, it's more changed shape than anything. It can kind of bend on itself, it can mash down if it's been worn really hard, but it doesn't just wear away from itself. So platinum rings, when they're done well, can last a long, long time. And that's one reason why people will spend more for it. The other reason that people like it is because it has a, an attractive patina to many. It has a more gray finish to it as it wears. Most of your white metals look very much the same when they're new, but they look different as they age and patina. Silver, of course, is going to oftentimes tarnish, making it look either dark or if it's cleaned a lot, it can be dull. It's hard to keep up with it. Your white gold is going to look a little bit warmer because it has that yellow gold in it and then platinum is going to be very obviously and naturally white metal so it's going to look almost gray over time a lot of people like this about it in fact many people love this about platinum <clears throat> it's a good choice and it's worth considering but you will spend more for platinum you should you should at least be aware there are advantages to it because many times we see the price points and we go oh well that's not worth it they look the same or that's not worth it it's just as good when you go from silver to gold in particular, I think that's the biggest jump category because I don't see silver as a long-term option, specifically in something like a ring. 
but even just the way it looks. I see a lot of sterling silver jewelry that will just sit around in a case and never get worn because it got dirty and they don't know how to really clean it up to make it look how they, how they liked it, what they fell in love with. That's not a problem with gold and platinum. So my closing opinions, and I've already given you some of them, I think for price point, there's some great options within costume jewelry, but just understand it's, it's short term. If you love this piece, it's not going to last you a lifetime. If you take care of it, you might get several years out of it, but at least consider that. Silver, similar category, depending on the piece, depending on how you take care of it. You can get silver pieces that last a long, long time. As we get into gold and platinum though, these are the type of jewelry pieces that will literally last a lifetime and beyond. They're heirloom pieces, they are pieces that can go to generations and be enjoyed, and they always have that material value to it. Again, it's worth considering, this is not a marketing opinion because you get a lot of ads and sometimes it's easy to fall into the, the mindset that, oh, well this is a respectable jeweler designer, they're doing something in sterling, it's, it's just as good, it's the same. It's not. On the other side, you have plenty of people marketing to you in gold and platinum where it feels like, well, they just want extra money for it. There's no reason to spend the, the extra time in order to do that. So think about it. I hope you benefited from this and I hope you learned something. I appreciate you watching. If you can subscribe, there's gonna be more to come. And I just appreciate you being here so you can learn a little bit more about what happens within the jewelry industry from more of a practical standpoint. So thanks again, and I hope you keep learning. With all that said, I'd like to know in the comments below what actually surprised you most because Again, I don't think enough people ask the, this question and I think a lot of people make assumptions. So if you found something to be surprising and or interesting, please let me know below.